So, it's a Christmas carol, about a Christmas carol, that's set slightly more contemporary. Interesting. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kevin, I am a geek. You're back with Kevin the Geek's 12 Days of Christmas Movie Reviews. It is day five. It is time for Scrooge, the 1988 Bill Murray movie, which I have so far never ever seen until today when I watch it for the very first time. And... Uh, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, when I first heard it, I just thought, is it going to be a Christmas carol set in the modern day? But no, they actually... It, it, it's a Christmas carol, but it's also basically in a world where a Christmas carol actually exists. And that, well, that posed an interesting concept. Um... But yeah, I kind of enjoyed it. So, I have 10 categories. Each one has to have a score out of 10. That gives me the overall ranking. And I know I can put all the movies in order. Which ones are, in my opinion, according to the category that I made up, which ones are indeed the best ones. If you have missed any of the previous episodes, then make sure you do take a look in the top right-hand corner. There is a link to the playlist where you'll see all five episodes. And let's get cracking. So, of course, we start off with the story. And it's... I mean, the story in of itself is nothing new or original. Because A Christmas Carol was, of course, written in the 1800s. And there have been various tellings of A Christmas Carol on stage, in TV, and in movies for, for years. Even radio versions of it. Um, but this is the first one I think that I have ever watched, which is a more of a contemporary viewing of it. And I was down for that. Um, like I said, the, the fact that this is set in a world where Christmas Carol already exists, I think I would have liked some some kind of meta commentary, maybe from from uh, Bill Murray's character. Um, I can't remember what his name was. Mr. Frost? Francis Frost or something like that, if I remember correctly. Um, I think I would have liked, you know, him going, oh, you know, just something to acknowledge that, considering the fact that he is the head of a TV network and the whole thing that they're doing is they're putting on a live broadcast of A Christmas Carol. Well, technically they're calling it Scrooge. You know, you'd, you'd like to think that there would have been some sort of commentary on the absurdity of the situation that he is basically going through all of this stuff at the same time of it being an actual thing that they're actually doing. Um, but yeah, overall, I really enjoyed the story of it and the fact that it was more of a modern retelling. So I think for the story... There were some things that could have been, you know, m m slightly improved upon. But for the most part, it told a really good story. And so for that, I'm going to score 8 out of 10 for this section. Now, with this piece, it is set in New York City, which I think, on one hand, you could say... And give the argument that they're making A Christmas Carol Americanized, Whereas, of course, it is traditionally a British in institution. But I think, it, it, I think for me personally, I think it gives somebody a little bit of an extra dynamic. The fact that it's not necessarily set in England, in, in London, in the Victorian times. So I'm I'm happy with that. And I think... The whole idea that he's the head of a TV network. The TV network is based in New York. 
And I, I've i always kind of had the feeling that you don't quite get as much of a Christmas cheer in a big metropolitan city, like in you know, a London, a New York, a Paris, you know, places like that. I, For me personally, I think you get more of a Christmas feel when it's a little bit more, uh, you know, homely and, you know, quieter in that regard. But maybe that's just me. And maybe that's just... You know, I, you know, me growing up in a smaller town, I've never experienced enough of Christmas at, in a, you know, in a massive, massive city. Um, but yeah, setting, it was good because I, I think that New York, it would probably do enough to make someone lose a, a little essence of, of their Christmas spirit, I think. So I'm going to give the setting, New York City, a score of seven. Marks out of 10 for that category. Now, the music for this movie, it, 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 I'm confused because at the end, it basically said it's, it's a score composed by Danny Elfman, who, of course, is a major uh, movie composer, but I almost felt like there, it didn't feel like there was a lot of, of music in, in this movie. Definitely not enough to... You know, I'm watching a scene and thinking, ah, oh, yeah, this this piece of music is is drawing me in and it's making me feel happy as this scene should do, or make me kind of scared and wary as this scene might do. And I was surprised at that. And then, of course, you don't really have many instances of a Christmas song. You get slight, slight snippets here and there, but it, and it's so quiet you can barely hear it. So, unfortunately, music's going to get a bit of a low score for for this one. I think I'll score the music four marks out of ten for this category. Now, your Christmas message. I feel it kind of cheats a little bit because it is, of course, based on Christmas Carol, which fundamentally has a fantastic Christmas message built into it. Um... But I, th- I think it really does a lot to really hammer home the importance, as any version of Christmas Carol should be doing, the importance of um, love in, in terms of a loving partner, love for your family, love for your friends, your colleagues, anybody really. And it was like pretty much every movie that I've done so far, it literally holds it back until the last maybe 15 minutes or so of the movie. Does that detract from it? No, no, it doesn't. Yes, there, again, could be a little bit of an argument to say a bit more could have been done. But, yeah, I think it had a really nice Christmas message. And I think maybe because it is treading on the footsteps of A Christmas Carol, so it didn't really go out of its way to set something new, I'm going to score it 8 marks out of 10 for a Christmas message. Next up, you have a Christmas cheer. And this one, I feel, had a little bit more of a leeway because of the fact that the Christmas cheer in and of itself isn't kind of linked to necessarily the story enough. So it couldn't really kind of grab onto um, a Christmas carol and the original artwork for that purpose. But overall, it was a nice, festive feel. And and this was a little bit more dotted about all the way through the movie compared to some of the other ones where it's, again, been kind of kept more towards the end. Um, but the whole scene where, where uh, you know, Bill Murray's character, after seeing the ghost of, uh, of what's yet to come or uh, future Christmas, whatever you want to call him, um, and he comes back to his colleague, who is, of course, trying to kill him after he fired him at the start of the movie. And then he goes onto the set, this live broadcast that they're doing of A Christmas Carol of Scrooge. And then right at the moment where the Scrooge in the piece should be about to get his own sort of Christmas um, kind of revelation... Bill Murray's one character comes in. And he basically starts talking down to the camera. And talking to everybody who's watching it live. And basically says, 
I've had a revelation and, you know, he's a little bit manic, not going to lie, as, as his character has kind of shown. But he just has that really heartfelt moment. And I think the one that tops off the most is the little kid. The little kid who's the son of um, the, the the assistant to Bilmo's character. And he hasn't spoken in five years. And he, you know, he, he just utters that, that little line. God bless us, everyone. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And so I think I'm going to score the Christmas cheer 8 marks out of 10. A main character, of course, is played by the wonderful, wonderful Bill Murray. And my biggest problem, I think, with it is I felt like I was watching Bill Murray. I didn't feel I was watching um, Francis... Frost, or whatever the guy's name was, the character that he was playing, the, the Scrooge, basically. And I, I love Bill Murray. When when he's on fire, he is fantastic. I mean, the the best thing that, that for me, the, and the most underrated thing he's ever done, was when he was in the movie for Little Shop of Horrors. And he played the patient of the dentist who enjoys the pain. That was just pure comedy gold. But in this, I didn't feel that connection and that separation from Bill Murray the actor to the character he was playing. He, he did a good job in what he needed to do. But I just wish I could have seen him more. And may, maybe that's the problem when you when you get a really big name to do something like this. Had it, had it been the exact same thing, the exact same performance with a lesser known um, actor... I think I would have, you know, grabbed onto it a bit more. But the fact that it was Bill Murray, I think I just separated me just ever so slightly. But the main character was good. So I'm going to give him seven marks out of ten. Now you're supporting characters. Quite a few in, in this one. Um, so, of course, you have the character that's played by Bobcat Goldthwaite, um, who starts off as a real... Um, kind of mousy executive uh, and did a good job and I didn't recognise that it was Bobcat Goldthwaite at first because I'm so used to seeing him what he looks like for example in um, the Police Academy movies you know all wild hair and everything like that but I was like I recognise that voice and I couldn't place it then he comes on at the end when he's got the shotgun he's trying to kill Bernie I was like that's who it is it clicked straight away and yeah, I, I can't imagine Bobcat Goldthwait never doing that kind of crazied, uh, frenzied persona. And he was a dream choice to, to do that casting. For the other characters, the other ones you have is um, Claire, who played the love interest. And she was sweet. She was really, really sweet. And I liked her as a character. Um, and was believable enough to think that, yeah, I think he would try and and, uh, and get her back. And I think she gave just enough to give a sense that she would give him another chance. Because once I realised that it had been 15 years since they'd actually dated and they'd actually dated, because I wasn't sure at first, but they actually dated and then they broke up. I was thinking, is that a bit too long? And would she not be pissed off or something like that? But then when you saw a few more, more things trickling through, I was like, yeah, I get it now. And she did a fantastic job. Um, and then, of course, your, your three um, ghosts. Of course, you always have the one that is, never speaks, the, the future Christmas one. Um, and again, that did good, just enough to make it... Because it doesn't speak, there's not a lot you can really do with it. But I like the character design of it. With like when he opened up the stomachs and then there was all the weird stuff inside. Um, the best of the lot was the the ghost of Christmas past. That one, he has a true Brooklyn thick accent and horrible teeth and all of that. Fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. The middle one, the Christmas present. I don't know. Something just didn't quite click with me. 
you know, I got what they were trying to go for, but it didn't quite click for me. But for all of the supporting characters, all the way through, standout performances, maybe just because that tiny thing with, with, the, with the second ghost, that maybe just stops it from getting, from getting top points. So supporting characters, 9 out of 10. Now, this one feels now a little bit weird because when I was thinking about how do I create categories for Christmas movies, I thought there will be a problem at some point. I thought, let's make it about like like it's the Grinch of the piece or the Scrooge of the piece. For this, Scrooge is both the main character and the Scrooge of the piece. And so I had to try and separate the character and the Scrooge ness of him um and the scroogeness of it was fantastic i mean maybe it went a little bit far i talk, like i mean the very thing right at the very start where it's like here's this advert for this scrooge thing that we're doing we're putting on a performance of scrooge it'll be live on tv this is the promo and this has been running for a little while we want to get people talking about it and he basically goes no, I want to show you my version. I want people to be so afraid to miss it. They've got to know what's going on. And he shows this promo that he's apparently put together, which shows a car chase with someone getting shot in the face. Someone taking, clearly it must be heroin or something like that. A, a terrorist and, and a plane blowing up. And then it's like, don't miss Scrooge, you're... Was it that your life may depend on it or something random like that? I was thinking, that's a bit far. But I get where they were going with for a modern version of a Scrooge in, in that setting and that scenario. So for the Scrooge element of the character, he's going to get nine marks out of ten. Now, it's Christmas movie. You need snow. And this one didn't have any. I think the most amount of snow it got was really from the the set of the show that they were doing. And if it wasn't for that, this would probably be getting zero. As it was, and it was relatively snowy. Although, admittedly, yes, it is fake snow. I'm going to give it two marks out of ten. And finally, Christmas decorations. Hard one, because the whole idea is that you know, he's a bit of a Scrooge. He doesn't really want Christmas and everything. So I've had to kind of be a little bit flexible with that. But you did have an amazing um, kind of scene. When he first goes into the past, you see his old house and the whole street lit up with, with loads of lights. And then his is the only house that didn't have any lights on Christmas Eve. And then you see interspersed all the other scenes. You have um, the, uh, the the brother's house uh, and he's hosting a, a party and they've got their decorations up and, and a few little things like that. But overall, decorations were a little bit lacking. So I'm going to give them 5 out of 10. And so what does that mean for the overall ranking? Well, I can tell you that Scrooged has scored 67 points out of 100, which gives it a B- rating. Now, if we take a look at the overall list of the five movies that we have reviewed so far, this score puts Scrooge currently into third place. It is very, very tight at the moment, you can see Miracle on 34th Street is currently top on 69, followed by White Christmas on 68, and now Scrooged in third with 67. So it's literally two points separating first from third. It's that close at the moment. So I'm really looking forward to, to the next movies that we do. As we go into the second half of this uh, little series, you are going to see a lot more of the more modern Christmas movies. Most of these are the ones that I have actually watched. Not in the, th the first five that I've done. I've never actually watched any of them. So this will be really interesting now. And seeing do I think about them in any differently. And am I maybe biased. 
with nostalgia. I hope not, but we'll have to see. The next episode, day six of my 12 Days of Christmas, is going to be slightly different. It's the only different one on this list. It's not a movie review per se, but it's a question where I attempt to answer the most debated question that you get every single year at Christmas. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie or is it a movie that's set at Christmas? We're going to find out. Don't forget to join me tomorrow as we delve into that question. If you want to know when my videos go live, make sure you click the notification bell. Subscribe if you're new. And please do drop a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts, Scrooge. Is it one of your favourites? Did you think it was a bit of a cheat? Or was it a really creative reimagining of a classic? But for today, my name is Kevin. I'm a geek, and you've been watching day five of my 12 days of Christmas. Thank you, goodbye, and have a Merry Christmas.